Welcome to another episode of the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. And today we're diving deep into the world of crypto, blockchain, and so much more. And I've got a very special guest joining me. His name is Brad Chase, and he's from Ripple. And now, as the industry grapples with tumultuous times and transformative changes, Brad's going to bring a unique perspective on the challenges and innovations that are shaping the future of digital finance. From the fall of giants like FTX to the pioneering solutions at Ripple, I want to explore the intricate world of crypto liquidity, AI's role in this ever-evolving landscape, and also what the future holds for this rapidly changing sector. So whether you are a crypto enthusiast, an investor, or just somebody just curious about the future, where this is going to lead, I invite you to join me in unravelling the complexities of all this and more with Brad Chase. So buckle up and hold on tight, because no matter where you are in the world right now, it's time to beam your ears to sunny Florida, where Brad Chase from Ripple is waiting to join us. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Brad. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Neil. Uh, my name is Brad Chase, and I lead our liquidity teams at Ripple. Uh, Ripple is an enterprise crypto company, um, and we're really focused on making it you know, simple and efficient to move value across the world using crypto and blockchain. Uh, we're a little over 10 years old. Uh, I've been very focused in the cross-border payment space, uh, and more recently have brought in to solve other areas like digital asset liquidity management, uh, digital asset custody and tokenization, uh, and just you know, really been a fantastic experience for me to be part of this journey of bringing crypto uh, to to solve problems in our financial space. Well, it's a pleasure to have you join me today. I think all areas of crypto and blockchain have got this passionate community that uh, we all know and love. But uh, today, I'll, rather than talk about that side of things, I want to talk about some of the the real world problems, challenges, and also opportunities, of course. So to set the scene for our conversation today, what would you say are the, the current liquidity challenges the industry is currently facing? And what are the, the pitfalls with some of the liquidity management solutions that are available today, just to set the scene for the chat? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of the way I think about this is, is you know, really through the lens of a Ripple strategy. Uh, and that is, on the one hand, you know, looking at challenges, you know, our customers face generally, whether they're using digital assets or not, or blockchain or not, uh, why we believe blockchain is important as a way to solve those challenges. And then as a result, one of those liquidity challenges we face in bringing um, blockchain to bear and kind of unpacking that a little bit. So, uh, you know, again, we're very focused on this moving value. There's this internet of value vision that Ripple wants to help bring about, which is making it as easy to move value as you can move information today. Part of the challenge there is a lot of our kind of the foundational elements of our global financial system is pretty old. It's, you know, hasn't really changed much since the seventies, certainly higher up the stack, you've got something, but really that kind of foundational layer is quite old. Uh, and as real, that means, you know, it's very hard to actually settle and move funds in that same real time traceable, visible manner that you do when you send an email. Um, and so, you know, we believe blockchain and digital asset technologies are the things that actually can go help solve that. So there's this $130 trillion cross-border payments market that we believe, you know, leveraging um, kind of the kind of single source of truth, open, distributed, kind of always available abilities of blockchain technology is, is, is huge. Um, you know, but the distinction there is that if we're kind of going into replacing that infrastructure, some of the money that's sitting in that infrastructure, so the actual liquidity that lets you trade has not yet kind of flowed as to be the same scale in the crypto space, just because it's newer and more nascent. And so, you know, part of the challenge is, you know, as we're trying to deliver that customer experience, that's, you know, fantastic for our payments customers, where they really get that highly reliable cross-border payment at low cost uh, and kind of quickly is kind of behind the scenes, having those integrations with various liquidity platforms, having liquidity partners, having all the additional kind of compliance things that over those whatever 50 odd years and uh, kind of our legacy financial system have been developed, we need to kind of start to build those pieces and, and learn from those uh, uh, elements to kind of deliver the same for digital asset adoption. And is there anything that you're able to share around how at Ripple you're actively building 
an almost blueprint for the crypto industry that will better enhance liquidity management, especially considering some of the recent setbacks like the collapse of platforms such as FTX, because it's a huge talking point right now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 2023 was definitely a, a tough year for the industry. Um, but at the same time, I'd say it, in many ways, it, it helps validate the way in which at least Ripple approaches the problem, which I think other enterprises and financial institutions uh, approach the problem. And that is um, really focusing on a use case, solving an end-to-end -end in a way that has kind of the highest standards and can be best in class for those customers, and then walking backwards to see what elements of that strategy can you apply to other areas of finance value movement. So concretely for Ripple, that is, you know, again, we, we started with this cross-border payment space for the reasons I spoke above. You know, along that journey, as we've been solving this for our customers, we've really had to go deep in liquidity management. So again, building our liquidity and trading platforms, integrations, partnerships, compliance services, and all these things that, uh, you know, take time to do well. Um, you know, maybe some folks in this space that didn't do that, unfortunately. Um, but then once you have those things, you can go look and say, hey, you know, today we're able to solve a cross-border payment for remittance company. But maybe there's a new company that wants to sell, you know, luxury goods that's looking to accept, you know, stable coins, or, you know, offer NFTs. They're going to have similar needs to manage liquidity and tap into that crypto liquidity so that their customers can kind of bridge that fiat system into the digital asset system. And so what we've done with say, you know, some putting a product that I've had the opportunity to lead is kind of take out that infrastructure we built for payments, but recognize its foundational infrastructure for other parts and other business use cases. And so that's really our, our blueprint that I, I think, honestly, you know, others in the industry think about as well. But given how new we are, there's all these bits and pieces that as you start to solve a specific use case, you see, oh, the next use case is going to need a little bit of this too. Uh, and so I, I think that also combats kind of some of the downsides that we've seen in, in, in the past year where, you know, as you get good at that, it kind of just kind of matures uh, the ecosystem at large. And so that's very much, you know, Ripple is very excited to continue that journey of finding new elements of infrastructure that then can be applied to different end to end use cases for customers. And if we look back a few years ago, I think all anyone was talking about was uh, the excitement around blockchain and crypto. And then, of course, artificial intelligence, Gen AI stole some of its thunder and some of those big headlines of excitement. But I've always said, for me, the real exciting things happen is when these emerging technologies begin to converge. So with that in mind, what role do you see AI and machine learning playing in predicting customer demand for assets? And how does this inform liquidity management too? Yeah, it's fantastic. Same thing. I think that's just also the fun part of being in these industries that are working new technologies is actually starting to see how they connect with others and very true at Ripple. Um, so machine learning and AI are things that we we already do at Ripple, we think are very important. Uh, in, in the way in which we think about it is, you know, any, um, you know, our goal is to provide that very consistent, you know, high caliber customer experience. But for payments, I think like there's parts of that that are, you know, decisions that have to be made on the scale of, Twenty seven million, you know, payments and fifty billion dollars worth of, of cross border payments that we've done with our solution over the years. So you can't have kind of simple strategies that run at that scale. And so AI and ML are the things that let you do that, right? So they help you forecast, um, you know, make our best estimates of the future for things that are not fully predictable, say like exchange rates or volatility or market supply. Uh, it then lets you kind of systematically optimize trade-offs uh, in a way that kind of reduces costs for our customers, but keeps resiliency and and kind of the, the high number of nines that we can for delivering those payments. Uh, and in kind of really building towards almost like a mini logistics platform where you have forecasting, planning, execution systems that all come together that give that consistency and uh, you know, before Ripple, I worked in hyperdisy trading space. Um, so, you know, many of those same kind of forecasting and, and risk management technologies can be applied here. But really, uh, you know, there's no other way to do it. You need AI and ML to do this well at the scale and consistency and the speed with which we want to deliver for our customers. And as conversations around AI and crypto increased, do you anticipate that AI could further disrupt the industry? Or do you think that both technology... Both technologies can ultimately complement one another. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'm always that kind of optimistic person. So definitely complementary. Um, in in fact, I mean, I guess, there's, I guess there's some interesting parallels, and then I think the ways in which they uh, converge with each other. So one 
the interesting parallel for me, like as you highlighted over the past year, we've really had generative AI, large language models come to the fore and really almost like a step change in the capabilities in that space. But if you look back, like the seeds of deep learning, neural networks, really neural necklace goes back, I think, you know, to the seventies and early eighties. Um, and so uh, I think it's just telling that, you know, going from a new technology to it actually, you know, being integrated in products, being a part of people's lives where it like become just part of the fabric of what we do takes time. And then crypto is very much in that, you know, that kind of phase of its journey as well, where I think Satoshi's white paper came out in 2008, you know, we're 15 years later. And so, you know, we're still embedding it in the technology. Um, but then if you think about how they kind of work together, so obviously as I just shared, there's very much the use of NML to how we fulfill liquidity, how we kind of do that logistics uh, of crypto liquidity and payments for our customers. Um, I think there's other ways uh, that specifically large language models and the new generative AIs can be relevant for say, you know, compliance, KYC, AML, uh, where we can kind of prevent, you know, use that, you know, that technology to you know, reduce the burden on customers, kind of increase the efficiency of our own teams. Uh, I think just customer support, you know, we, we've seen both well done and not well done. The use of, you know, chat GPT uh, for doing customer service. I think it's a great place to start. We definitely need to make it better. But I think there is a lot of value there in, in how customers integrate and, and, you know, interact with their services. Um, on the flip side, I think there's interesting questions about what crypto can do for AI, actually. Uh, again, with generative AI, a lot of the questions are around, you know, authenticity, copyright, kind of provenance. Um, that's actually a thing that blockchain does quite well. Um, it can, you know, the, the amazing part of the way we, I think about blockchain technology that's just mind blowing to me is basically this shared infrastructure that is open, that anyone can participate in, and enables these different parties that have no pre-existing ar agreements or arrangements to reach a shared source of truth. So I think applying that to some of the data, some of the <laughs> content generated by uh, LLMs, I, I think is a place where crypto might actually help speed the adoption of AI. So you know, very much exciting to kind of have both of these technologies uh, at the forefront now and, and kind of being part of the industry that gets to figure out how they can be combined. 100% with you on that. We already find ourselves in February 2024, and there's a lot of excitement and predictions around Bitcoin, ETFs, et cetera. But I'm curious, as someone right in the heart of this space, what trends do you think will see further emerge this year for the crypto industry? Because there's a lot going on at the moment, isn't there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the, you know, the ETF uh, approvals are, are a sign of one trend that I've you know, seen in the last year, I think we'll see a lot of this year, which is that institutional adoption. Um, yeah, which is, you know, really, you know, kind of maybe a couple of elements for, for why we've gotten here, where I see it going. So one would be, you know, we've had a couple of these up and down cycles throughout crypto and crypto stays around. Um, and so I think that's given, you know, confidence for institutions that it's a thing that can be relied on to solve the problems that they've seen kind of the early signs of success, be it cross-border payments or otherwise. And the great thing though, is this is kind of a virtuous cycle. So as we have the institutions leading in, kind of you know the compliance, the stability will will grow. We'll track others to the space to kind of kind of continue to level those up. And then as a result of that, more institutions will will lean in. And so I think it's just a fantastic um, cycle that will just accelerate as as it's happening. So I think we see early in the year with the ETF adoption. I think past that we'll continue to see more work in you know broader tokenization. Where tokenization here is about representing other real world assets say real estate, art, other different types, uh, financial instruments on the blockchain, um, which in turn will make it more efficient to operate and manage those, lower the barriers to entry to give kind of broader access where, you know, people today that may not be able to invest in a luxury, you know, art item may be able to own a share of that. Uh, and so kind of just nice uh, way in which, um, you know, institutions can actually accelerate in a way uh, that we may have not seen three to five years ago. Within that space, if I think more about maybe where Ripple uh, specifically is looking at, I think it's kind of that theme I shared where we go deep on a use case and then start to see the primitives that can apply to other areas. And so, you know, Ripple now has custody offering, which is fantastic. I think what we're learning in Liquidity Hub is kind of this value of on and off ramps. So that is, 
I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the day, which is not too far away, where people stop thinking about, are you a crypto company? And same way that people don't ask if you're an internet company anymore. It's just mm. part of how you operate your business. So I think establishing these, these components on off ramps, um, identity and compliance solutions, um, and, and start to have that infrastructure where it's standard and can be used, uh, is what I'm hoping to see, uh, happen in 2024. And on behalf of your passionate community, I also want to highlight that Ripple successfully launched Liquidity uh, Liquidity Hub last year. I've got to ask, what are Ripple's ambitions this year to grow that service? So you might be locked down as to what you can share, but is there anything you can share around that? Yeah, it's a uh, you know a little bit of a broken record on my part, but it, like it's it's this idea that it really uh, can enable that infrastructure layer, you know, and particularly. I'm seeing an exciting um, resonance that we also saw with our payments customers of moving value end to end. Uh, and so that is, say for the liquidity space, maybe, you know, this NFT example marketplace is shared, maybe they have an exchange they can integrate with, but it doesn't really help them settle ultimately with their customers who need to you know, pay with a credit card or move some funds in and out. And so I think, you know, Ripple's strategy of continuing to find the common thread between this value movement uh, for these use cases is exciting. So just kind of kind of kind of see where we can double down on what's really working well for those customers uh, and doing it kind of global scale uh, in a way that is uh, really powerful. Well, thank you so much for spending a bit of time with me today and talking about uh, some some of the things we can expect and also sharing your insights. Now, regular listeners will know I always ask my guests to leave everyone listening with either a book or a song, a song for the Spotify place, a book for our Amazon wish list. I don't mind which you're going to leave us with. All I ask is what would you like to leave everyone listening with and why? Yeah, uh, so it's a book I, I read uh, recently. Um, it's called One Giant Leap, The Impossible Mission That Flew Us to the Moon by Charles Fishman. Um, somehow I got a kick on space, I don't know, over over December. But it's just a fantastic book that really looks at kind of the Apollo program, which started with John F. Kennedy in 1951, you know, telling the world that the U.S. was going to land someone on the moon by the end of the decade. And what's so striking is we had no plan how we were going to do it. Many of the engineers and scientists did not know if we could even do it. Um, and yet, remarkably, we did. So it's just a great study in dealing with ambiguity, um, kind of dealing with, uh, you know, challenges and the ups and downs of delivering something, but also just how having such like a really, you know, moonshot, the first moonshot, like such a high bar that you're trying to hit brings out the best in, in many ways. Uh, so just, yeah, great book. Uh, highly recommend it. Awesome. Well, I'll get that book added straight to our wish list. And for anyone listening, maybe they want to dig a little bit deeper on anything we talked about today. Is there anywhere in particular you'd like to point them if they want to contact your team, join your community, or just stay up to speed with the latest development? Yeah, go to our website, ripple.com. Um, definitely some great content there, what we're already up to, but also where we regularly share updates with our business partners and, and kind of all the fun things that we're delivering for Ripple. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on here today, sharing your insights and also how you're building that blueprint for the rest of the industry to follow when it comes to liquidity management and why it matters, what we can expect for the future. I think we could spoke, we could speak about this stuff for hours, but I'd love to stay in touch with you as this continues to evolve, maybe get you back on later in the year. And more than anything, I just thanks for sharing your story today. Thank you so much, Neil. It was a lot of fun. As we conclude our conversation with Brad today, I think it's evident that the world of cryptocurrency is not just surviving its trials, but it's also poised for a future filled with innovation and transformation. And Brad's expertise has certainly shed light on how Ripple is navigating some of the challenges of liquidity management and leveraging AI to revolutionise that crypto landscape. But as we all sit here and ponder the future trends of 2024 and beyond, I think it's clear that the crypto industry is on the cusp of something new, isn't it? Something exciting. But what are your thoughts on the future of crypto, blockchain and anything in between? How do you see all these advancements that we're witnessing right now? How do you see them impacting your personal financial strategy? Is it going to make a difference? Is it not? I invite you to share your thoughts with me today. I don't have all the answers, but I know there's a passionate community out there of people that I've got some very strong thoughts and feelings on this too. So please, let's carry this conversation on, share your thoughts and continue this conversation with us. 
Uh, email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. But that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll have a completely different guest, different technology, different industry. We'll try and explore and demystify that together too. But until then, keep exploring, keep questioning, and most importantly, stay ahead in this ever-evolving world of technology. Maybe, and let me know how you do it, because it's getting harder and harder keeping up with the pace of technological change. And I think there is a reality that... Uh, although it can be difficult keeping up. It's never going to move this slow again. So any tips on how you keep up to speed and stay ahead of the curve? I'd love to hear what you do too. So I'm rambling now, so it's time for me to walk off into the sunset and I will wait patiently in your podcast feeds with another guest tomorrow. But thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Stranger.